in this video we will talk about the cardiomyopathies cardiomyopathies are simply a group of cardiac dysfunction in which there is a defect primarily within the myocardium we know that heart has three layers the endocardium myocardium and the pericardium the myocardium is the muscular layer and is responsible for the pumping action of the heart when there is defect primarily within the uh, myocardium within this layer this is termed as cardiomyopathy now uh, primarily the my uh, cardiomyopathies are of uh, three types the first type is the dilated cardiomyopathy also called as the congestive heart failure in uh, dilated cardiomyopathy there is global Im impairment in the contractility of uh, heart uh, in which uh, the myocardium cannot contract well when the myocardium cannot contract well the heart cannot pump enough blood out of it and the blood starts to accumulate in the ventricles which uh, causes dilation in the ventricles called the dilated cardiomyopathy and uh, due to this failing myocardium there is there occurs the biventricular failure means uh, the both ventricles right and the left ventricle fail the type of heart failure present in dilated cardiomyopathy is systolic heart failure which means the heart cannot pump enough blood out of it during systole due to the left ventricular heart failure the uh, pressure in the left ventricle starts to increase which in turn increases the pressure inside the left atrium since the left atrium receives its uh, blood from the pulmonary veins the pressure in the pulmonary veins also increases which ultimately increases the pressure in the uh, pulmonary capillaries since capillaries are the most permeable blood vessels in the body the increased pressure in the capillaries causes the fluid to leak out of uh, capillaries into the uh, pulmonary interstitium which uh, leads to pulmonary edema also due to right ventricular heart failure the pressure inside the uh, right uh, ventricle increases which increases the pressure in the right atrium which in ultimately increases the pressure in uh, superior and inferior vena cava and uh, this leads to hepatomegaly and generalized edema uh, generalized edema is also called as nasarca and uh, there may also be ascites which is the accumulation of fluid in the uh, peritoneal cavity since the heart is not able to pump enough blood out of it the uh, heart tries to increase the cardiac output by overfilling the ventricle so that more and more blood is present uh, inside the ventricle at the time of systole which increases the cardiac output due to this uh, rapid filling of overfilled ventricle the valve between the ventricle and the atrium may stretch which may give rise to uh, an extra heart sound called as s3 also the pooled blood inside these ventricles inside these dilated ventricles may uh, increase the chance of uh, thrombi formation the causes of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy include alcohol beriberi coxsackie virus cocaine chagas disease uh, drugs like uh, doxorubicin hemochromatosis uh, which is the iron overloading condition and in 30 percent of the cases the cause is genetic the pathophysiology of dilated cardiomyopathy first there are some triggers that weaken the heart muscle and uh, this uh, decreases the um, ability of the myocardium to contract well this decreases the cardiac output and causes the dilation of the ventricles the dilation of ventricles further weakens the walls of the heart decreasing the cardiac output further the clinical manifestations include the exercise intolerance which is due to decreased cardiac output when the tissues are not not getting enough oxygen and nutrients fatigue uh, dyspnea which is due to uh, pulmonary edema orthopnea which is difficulty in breathing when lying flat uh, there may be nausea vomiting and uh, loss of appetite which is called anorexia the diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy can be made on the basis of uh, history echocardiography which uncovers the structural abnormalities the systolic and diastolic dysfunctions of the uh, heart chest x-ray uh, especially when there is heart failure the chest x-ray shows um, enlarged heart shadow cardiac catheterization can also be used in the diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy the medical management of dilated cardiomyopathy includes the medications like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors which uh, cause vasodilation to lower the blood pressure and also decrease the cardiac workload angiotensin 2 receptor blockers these are used as alternatives to angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors beta blockers like atinolol uh, it slows the heart rate and uh, blood pressure diuretics can be used especially in case of fluid retention like if there is generalized edema pulmonary edema or there is ascites we can use diuretics to get rid of their extra uh, to get rid of this uh, extra fluid 
Digozine, this drug strengthens the heart muscle contractions and uh, uh, improves the uh, cardiac output. Anticoagulant therapy is used when there, there are chances of uh, uh, thrombi formation like when there is pooled blood inside the dilated ventricles uh, and there, um, we suspect that there are increased chances of uh, coagulation. We can give uh, anticoagulant therapy like uh, heparin, warfarin. The second type of cardiomyopathy is the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy also called as the asymmetric hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In this type of cardiomyopathy, there is pathologic hypertrophy of the myocardium mainly in the interventricular septum. This hypertrophy is not all over the myocardium, but it is mostly localized in the interventricular septum. Uh, that is the reason it is called as asymmetric hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Due to the gene mutations in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there are some uh, impaired sarcomere proteins which produce the growth factors and these growth factors also act on the myocytes which cause the growth or the hypertrophy of uh, myocardial cells which uh, leads to hypertrophy of the interventricular septum. Due to this hypertrophied interventricular septum, the left ventricle cavity reduces which means uh, less blood will be able to fill in it and uh, less blood will be uh, pumped out of it so the cardiac output decreases. When this uh, hypertrophy is uh, in close proximity to aorta, this can cause outflow obstruction and in th that case it is termed as hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. In some cases, the mitral valve leaflet hits the hypertrophied area uh, with each heartbeat and this can cause fibrosis and obstruction. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cause of sudden death in young athletes. The cause of uh, hypertrophied card uh, cardiomyopathy is the gene mutations which can cause um, uh, the production of uh, uh, impaired sarcomere proteins. Pathophysiology of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Due to the etiological factors, the walls of the heart start to thicken and this thickening decreases the ventricle's ability to relax properly. When the ventricle cannot relax properly, this means that less blood will be able to fill the ventricle. When there is uh, less blood in the ventricle, uh, during systole, less blood will be able to leave the ventricle. This decreases the cardiac output. Also, in uh, some cases, the aortic valve may get uh, obstructed due to this uh, uh, asymmetric hypertrophy. Clinical manifestations. The patient may experience dyspnea on exertion, uh, fainting or syncope, arrhythmias, fatigue and angina. The diagnosis of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is based on the history and uh, echocardiography, MRI and uh, cardiac catheterization. The medical management includes the use of uh, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, septal myectomy which is a procedure to remove the hypertrophied area with the uh, surgical excision and septal ablation in which alcohol is infused into the hypertrophied area with the help of catheter alcohol is uh, toxic and causes the some of uh, uh, some of the heart muscle cells to shrink and die and the remaining scar tissue is uh, thinner than the heart muscle the third type of cardiomyopathy is the restrictive cardiomyopathy in restrictive cardiomyopathy the ventricles of the heart are too rigid to expand as they fill with the blood and lead to restrictive cardiomyopathy. There is a failure to relax properly during diastole and this leads to diastolic failure. It means when the, when the heart is undergoing diastole and blood is coming from the atrium to the ventricles, since the ventricles are not able to relax properly, less blood is able to fill the ventricles and this leads to decreased cardiac output termed as the diastolic heart failure. Causes of restrictive cardiomyopathy. Mostly it is idiopathic that is the cause of restrictive cardiomyopathy in most of the cases is unknown. The other causes include post radiation fibrosis like if the patient is receiving radiation therapy for substernal or mediastinal tumors and there is injury of the myocardium due to the radiation and uh, this leads to uh, fibrosis of the myocardium and uh, this causes restrictive cardiomyopathy. Amyloidosis which is the deposition of uh, abnormal protein in the myocardium sarcoidosis and this is the multi-system granulomatous disease in this uh, type of uh, disease there occurs uh, multiple granulomas throughout the body and in case of myocardium there are tiny uh, granulomas in the myocardium which lead to rigidness of the myocardium glycogen storage disease when we have we don't have enough enzymes to break the glycogen and it starts to build up in the myocardium infiltration of the myocardium by met metastasis uh, endomyocardial fibrosis and uh, low flurs endomyocardites. The pathophysiology of restrictive cardiomyopathy. 
Due to the etiological factors, there is stiffness in the ventricle walls and loss of ventricular elasticity due to, the ventri due to which the ventricles cannot relax properly during filling and this leads to ventricles becoming resistant to filling. And uh, when there is less blood present in the ventricles, at the time of systole, there is less blood uh, pumping out of the uh, ventricles. This leads to decreased cardiac output. The clinical manifestations of restrictive cardiomyopathy include shortness of breath. At first, the shortness of breath occurs with exercise and uh, other activities, but uh, over time, when it becomes chronic, it, uh, it occurs at rest. There may be fatigue, inability to exercise, nausea, bloating, and poor appetite, uh, which may be due to fluid retention, and there may be chest pain or pressure. The diagnosis of restrictive cardiomyopathy is based on history of the patient's symptoms and other conditions, physical examination, chest x-ray, and uh, echocardiogram. Also, we can use uh, uh, exercise stress test, uh, CT scan of the heart, MRI, cardiac catheterization, and uh, myocardial biopsy in which a small uh, portion of the myocardium is uh, uh, excised by the use of a catheter and uh, this is used for the uh, diagnostic purposes. The medical management includes beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, uh, endomyocardial stripping and cardiac transplantation when there is primary cardiac amyloidosis and no evidence of systemic involvement. Now the nursing management. The first nursing diagnosis is decreased cardiac output related to decreased ventricular function. Uh, the nursing interventions for this include recording the intake and output because uh, fluid intake and output is directly related to the volume of blood and which is directly related to the cardiac output of the patient. If the patient is having chest pain, ask the patient to lie uh, down and uh, monitor his cardiac rhythm, give supplemental oxygen and give medication for pain and notify, notify the physician immediately. Instruct the patient to avoid vigorous exercise and activities to um, to decrease the cardiac uh, workload and instruct the patient to take all the prescribed medications on time. The second nursing diagnosis is activity intolerance related to low uh, cardiac output. Uh, have the patient perform activities more slowly and in a longer time with more rest or uh, pauses to uh, conserve the energy. Assist the patient in activities of daily living uh, while avoiding patient dependency and uh, refrain from performing non ask the patient to refrain from performing non-essential activities or procedures to save the energy for purposeful uh, activities. The third nursing diagnosis uh, can be fluid volume excess related to ventricular dysfunction. Uh, for this, uh, monitor the urine output and weigh the patient daily and compare the previous weights because when fluid retention occurs, the patient's weight uh, increases. Monitor the blood pressure and instruct the patient to reduce the sodium intake. More sodium intake means more fluid retention. And when there is uh, edema or acids or any type of uh, fluid retention, we can use uh, diuretics as prescribed. The fourth nursing diagnosis will be anxiety related to disease condition and hospitalization because the patient will be anxious about uh, uh, his uh, condition and uh, the course of hospitalization. For this, assess the patient's level of anxiety and interact with uh, the patient in a peaceful manner. Talk to the patient in a, si in a simple language and uh, brief statements. Do not try to give lots of information at uh, one time. Avoid unnecessary in uh, reassurance because this may uh, increase undue worry. If we know about the source of anxiety uh, of the patient, we can uh, intervene to eliminate these sources to reduce the anxiety of the patient. Thank you. That was all about the cardiomyopathies.